Hello everybody, Nick again here with Scott and Nicky. We appreciate you stopping by for another one of our weekly tech videos. We're back to doing some tech after we did some product videos last week. The one we're going to be talking about today is fuel systems, specifically fuel pressure regulators and where they go in your fuel system. Some of y'all might think this doesn't really matter. Other people could not be more confused. So does it matter where this goes in your fuel system? Back at the gas tank, near the fuel rail, before it goes to the fuel rail? After it goes to the fuel rail? What's a deadhead system? All these questions, all these terms. We get a few people that call. This is usually something that pertains more to the higher horsepower guys. As you can tell, I'm holding a super high quality aeromotive fuel pressure regulator here. This is something that, you know, 10 a in feed and return, something that has a boost reference on it. This is for big power. We're talking 800,000 plus horsepower. But what I'm gonna be talking to you about today is gonna to cover the whole range of it. Now, if you remember some of our other videos talking about the uh, fuel pressure regulator and filter combo, you know, the one that came in the C5 Corvettes, is used for swaps all the time. You usually put it far back at the gas tank. Pretend that this intake manifold I have here, this is a spare LS6 that I have on a spare engine here. Pretend this is like on the car, the nose of the car here, the tank is over off the side of the camera. You might be thinking, well, you know, I watched one of your other videos. It seems like that's put kind of towards the pump and the gas tank of something in the back and then it's just one hose that comes up here, wise into the, the fuel rails and then you plug off here so it's sealed and everything's good to go. That's what you would call a bit of a returnless deadhead style system. And actually for a Nashi aspirated setup, just like those fuel pressure regulator and filter combos are meant to do, that's perfectly fine. It can actually handle quite a bit of power. Like we've said, 500, 600 horse. People use them on a lot of stuff, trouble free. But what happens when you get into that big power range? And so you pick up one of these and you're, you know, you're making your lines, you got some nice AN line here, and you're trying to figure out where does this go? Do you, you know, do you hook it here and then hook it up to your fuel rail? You know, do you do it after the fuel rail? Well, there's actually a little bit of science behind this. And I can tell you for the most part, lower horsepower, it doesn't actually matter too much. Now what you're probably wondering why I said that, it, this stuff can fluctuate and flutter a little bit and having a hard time balancing your fuel pressure if you put it before the fuel rail. So if you have one side going in, your return at the bottom, and then it goes out to another deadhead style setup at your fuel rails where you plug them off, why it all in, you still have a good high quality fuel system, especially if you're using some of these parts here like I got my hand and on this table, but as you are building power, as long as you're going through your rev range and the injectors are firing, your fuel pump's trying to keep up, the actual spring and little valve in here that you know, releases that pressure to maintain it at whatever you've set it at can kind of start to flutter as this is all bouncing around. Sometimes you can see factory fuel pressure regulators next to the rail have a dampener. It looks like another fuel pressure regulator and it's to help those, you know, variations in, you know, PSI pulse, if you will. So on high horsepower, this does matter. On low horsepower, not so much. But you might be saying, okay, well, you keep talking about this high horsepower, so what do I do? Well, the proper way to do this when you start getting into big power is to mount this after the fuel rails. So you will run your fuel pump, your fuel filter, run your lines all the way up to your fuel, well, fuel rails directly. It will go all the way through, and then you will run this at the end. What that does is it helps keep the pressure fluctuations very, very low if not kind of get, gets rid of them entirely in, in most applications. And that way you get a consistent fuel flow and fuel pressure. It's actually kind of a big deal if you think about it. You go lean for just a second when you're making 1,000, 1,200 horsepower when you're running 25, 30 pounds of boost on something crazy like an LS or an LT or a small block, big block, whatever. It can actually, that moment of running lean or running rich, it can cause a lot of issues. So it actually does matter. So we do appreciate you guys stopping by for another one of our weekly tech videos. We do these all the time. So if you would please like, subscribe, share with your friends. Uh, we like to do these to help out hot rodders like you and me. And we will see you guys for another one of our weekly tech videos next Friday. Thanks for stopping by.